Hey, 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 songbirds. It is Kerry Ho and I am from the songbirdtree.com where we get grounded, take flight and sing. And welcome to another live stream, weekly warm-ups with Kerry, which of course we actually do every single week, um, every Monday, 8 p.m. EDT and Tuesday, 10 a.m. AEST. So it's so amazing to have you here with me. Um, whether you are watching right now live or you are watching later, I'm just so happy that you're here and welcome, welcome, welcome. So today's actually a really, really special topic. Um, it is episode six, vocal warm-up for dry throats. You know, um, a lot of my students have been telling me that they've been struggling with um, dry throat season, like allergy season. So I thought it'd be a really good time to cover something like this, okay? Um, so that is gonna be what we're covering today. We're actually gonna do a really beautiful warm up um, for dry throats, which is also gonna be so useful for if you're feeling a bit husky, if you're feeling a little bit just vocally fatigued um, and stuff like that as well. So, um, or, or maybe you've just had a cold and you're not feeling so great and you know, just wanting to get right back into singing. This is a really good one for that, okay? Um, and I need to say, if you haven't watched episode three, which was how to warm up quietly, um, do make sure you go and check that out after, of course, you watch this video um, because um, that those warm-ups are also really good for dry throat, okay? Because when we're actually trying to warm up for dry throat, what we really want to do is choose exercises that are very gentle, that are just going to, you know, gently stretch and, and get your vocal folds in such a way that they vibrate really optimally. Um, and that there's just absolutely no strain. Okay, that's basically what we're looking for when we're warming up for dry throats, and that episode three is going to have some exercises that will be very helpful as well. Now, um, before we get on to the actual warm-up, I just want to quickly remind you, um, if you haven't already, um, you know, go to the website that is now coming up at the bottom of the screen and get my free gift. Uh, my ultimate vocal warm-up guide ebook. It's going to really help you. You're going to love it. And did I mention it's free? Um, so yeah, do make sure you go and get that at some stage. So hello, everybody who is on. Hello, Kina. Hello, King. Um, hello, Von Von. I love the name. Um, hello, Living for Food. Hello, Pablo. It's so good to see you guys. All right, we are going to get right into the warm-up now. Okay, so as I said to you, the topic of the day is vocal warm-up for dry throats, okay? Now, when it comes to dry throat, right, as I said before, it needs to be gentle. And one of the most gentlest um, scales that really help you is in this, in this situation is actually a descending pattern. So what that means is that instead of going up in a scale, we're going down, all right? So for example, instead of doing this, da 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 because that's up and then down, we just do down, da 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 okay? So basically, descending scales are the best when you're wanting to warm up for a dry throat or when you're feeling a bit husky, a bit weak, all of that sort of thing, all right? So we are going to be really capitalizing on that and doing all descending scales today, all right? Let's get into the first scale without any further ado. So the first one is just your, our beautiful bubble, right? And we're going to do a beautiful descending fifth slide. So, now it's important to just keep it all quite quiet and gentle, all right? There's no need to make this loud, not at all, okay? So just like, get, let's get the bubble going. Use your fingers to support here to help you maintain the bubble if you need to. And if you prefer to do the tongue trill, that's completely fine as well. Here we go. Girls here and guys here. Let's go. Done. Now, hopefully you felt that just the really soothing nature of that slide, you know, you know, that kind of feeling. 
So it really helps you to not strain at all, which is so important when you have a dry throat, sore throat. I mean, it's important all the time. We don't ever want to strain our voices, but especially when you're feeling a little bit vulnerable, you know, with a dry throat or, you know, having just had a cold or vocally fatigued, you really don't want to strain. And that's why we don't do upward movements um, when we're trying to warm up for a dry throat, okay? We're all doing really gentle, beautiful downward movements. All right, now that was a really good one to start with. We're going to move on to now straw. Now, if you have a straw... I'd like you to go grab it right now, okay? So the straw is basically your, um, like your, th- this is magic, okay? And especially if you have a dry throat, a sore throat, whatever, this is basically what you need to be using, okay? Straws are actually used in vocal therapy to help people who've lost their voices or got nodules and things like that to actually recover. So this is absolutely magical. So if you've got one, please go grab it now. We're going to do an exercise on it. Now, if you don't have one right now, um, don't stress. Um, you can actually use, instead of the straw, you can actually use the word, the v, v, the sound of the V. Okay, so just go V. So it's sort of semi um, making the same kind of effect. All right. Um, and, and, and that'll do for now until you get the chance to go to the shops and get some straws, okay? So again, we're going to capitalize on that beautiful descending scale and it's a descending fifth and we're going to go... Okay, and it's all about slow and gentle slide down, okay? Girls here, guys here, let's do this together. Ready? And... Really slide it down. So hopefully you're seeing the pattern of what I'm trying to do. It's really just really gentle exercises to wake your vocal folds up. Now, that one is absolutely one of the best to get your vocal folds vibrating really optimally together. That means there's no strain. There's maximum resonance, um, which is going to help you sound great, but with little effort. All right. All right, the third exercise is we're going to do some mmm. So when we actually are able to build resonance, which is what happens when we use the mmm exercise, right? When you go mmm, mm, you should feel a bit of a tickle in your nose and stuff like that. That's resonance, okay? Helping you to project your voice without effort, without you straining, shouting and all that, which is so important when you have a dry throat. You don't want to be straining, shouting, yelling, pushing at all, okay? Um, and so the mmm is going to help you to also make the vocal folds really just vibrate optimally, very gently with maximum resonance. Um, and we're again, we're going to do a descending scale, but now we're going to actually sing some notes. So we're not just going to slide. We're going to go five notes descending. Um, we we'll start here, girls here, guys here, and it goes like this. And I want you to really feel that buzz there, really ring the sound from your nose and also even out of your eyes like laser beams, okay? Here we go. And and just chew on it while you're doing it. Feeling the buzz there? and down inside your mouth as you do this. Awesome. 
time. So hopefully you find a lot of tickly sensations there. When you feel that, you know you're doing it right. It's it, it should feel buzzy and a bit itchy and a bit tickly, okay? And that's just doing wonders for your vocal folds, especially when you have a dry throat. All right, our final exercise before I go on to share my six best dry throat remedies, all right, is and ooh, fifth descending slide. So everybody, just pretend to be an owl for me and put your lips together, the corners of your lips together and go ooh, ooh, ooh. You can even put a little H in front of the ooh, okay? Ooh, 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 okay? And do this in your head voice. Ooh, ooh. So it's so gentle, it's so easy to do. And this is just like a, an exercise that I need you to approach as if you are singing a lullaby to a baby. You're actually trying to make a baby fall asleep with this. So it's super gentle. Okay. So it goes like this. Ooh. Remember, beautiful, gentle slide down. Ooh. You can put the H in front. But not too loud H, just a very gentle, almost inaudible H. Ooh, ooh. Yep, don't get loud on this. Ooh, well done. exercises that will really help to get your vocal folds vibrating in the right way um, and get you ready for singing when you have a dry throat, okay? Um, I'm now going to, instead of singing, singing a song today, because I just really felt like that this particular topic, it was more important for me to actually share with you some of my best dry throat remedies. So we're going to go on to that. Now I'm just going to quickly go over and see Who's going on? Who's here? And to say hello. Oh, welcome, Kina from the Philippines. So good. Hi, Yvonne from Atlanta. Amazing. Okay. So, um, oh, thank you so much, Darren. That is really, really, really um, nice. Um, now, Abdul, you're asking, how do you do head voice? It's, it's pretty much your falsetto. It's the same thing. So you're really going for that lighter sound. Um, one way to do it first is just pretend you're an owl hoo, hoo, or go ah, ah, like a high side. That's how you can access it. Um, hey, Virginia. Uh, yeah, I love the buzzing too. The buzzing really does help uh, to, 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 you know, help us to really just get a gentle voice. Um, Warm up going on and get our voice ready, um, Darren. I'm really glad to to hear that you can see that it works so good. Hey, Cheryl, good to see you here. Um, good to see you, pretty boy James and Lee Life as well. Okay, let's get back into the dry throat remedies now. Guys, I'd also like you to share your own. If you have any amazing dry throat remedies that you have used in the past that have really worked for you, please feel free to share in the chat and in the comments. Um, I would love to know, okay? But I'm going to share with you six of my best ones today. So the first one, and this sounds pretty obvious, but I think it's an important one to mention, and that is to drink more water throughout your day and eat more water-rich foods. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're feeling dry in your throat, you need hydration. Your body needs hydration. The cells in your body are crying out for more water okay um and it's better to be just sipping on water all through the day you know so your best friend honestly when you have dry throat is this water bottle okay i find that i will drink much more water if i have a bottle because then i go okay i'm going to try and finish this bottle by a certain time of day and then i'm going to refill it and i you know i basically sort of try and set myself a goal i want to i want to be able to get through um you know say three of these bottles a day something like that right um, that I find to be really, really useful. Um, and also eat foods that have a lot a lot of water in it. So, for example, cucumbers and uh, tomatoes, spinach, broccoli, oranges, um, apples. Um, they are really, really fantastic because they are very, very water rich, like 90% or more water, something like that. Um, you know, so... Oh, Laurie, you've, you've um, shared something really cool. Let a small spoon of honey dissolve in the mouth. Love it. Absolutely love it. I totally agree. Thank you so much for sharing that. 
Virginia Humphrey Taylor says um, that it works. My mouth is wetter now. Think of cutting a lemon. <laughs> Okay, do you mean the, the warm-up? I think I think you meant the warm-up. I'm not sure. But anyway, awesome. So, um, yep, yeah, uh, guys, just if you, if you have any other, um, you know, remedies, do share. But, yeah, so just get more water in your system, okay? Um, that is definitely going to be the first port of call. The second one I would um, want to recommend for you is, is, is to get a humidifier. It is actually a really worthy investment for a singer. Um, you know, so you could probably find this online. Just, just Google uh, or, you know, on eBay, Amazon, whatever, humidifier. Um, or when the shops do eventually open, um, you can go and get it at the shops. Um, but basically, uh, if you don't know, a humidifier is a, it's kind of like a, a box um, sort of, um, I don't even, can't even find the words today, but you put water in it. You basically fill it with water and then you you plug it into an electric socket and then that basically releases steam into the air through the water. And so what it does is it actually humidifies the air. It moisturizes the air, you know, because in allergy season and stuff like that, the air is so dry around us, right? And there's all this like dust and whatever um, in, in the air. So a humidifier is such a good way to just sort of keep your room hydrated. I find for me personally, I do this at night when I'm sleeping. I put my humidifier next to me, um, you know, uh, beside my bed, and then it just creates steam throughout the night. And I have found personally that it has helped me so much because I'm actually, I get really dry when I'm sleeping, especially during allergy season. And I tend to wake up wake up coughing. Like I literally wake myself up coughing. I literally have dreams of coughing and then I wake up coughing. It's so bad. That's how dry I get. I don't know if anybody else can relate to that. But since using a humidifier, it has definitely reduced a lot. Like as in my coughing has reduced a lot um, and I'm waking up less in the night, which is amazing. Um, yeah. So I would say that a humidifier is um, fantastic. Uh, yes, uh, opera singers absolutely do do this. They're really good. Opera singers, for one, are so good at looking after themselves, looking after their voices, I mean, just because of the strenuous nature of what they do. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, all right. So that is my next tip, which is the humidifier, okay? And then the third tip, you know, if you can't afford to get a humidifier or, you, or you're just not in a position to find one at the moment because of all the lockdowns and everything or whatever it is, um, steam is fantastic. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is that you literally fill your bathroom sink with hot water and then you stand over it and you put a towel over your head and you and you breathe in the steam. So you do that for a few minutes every day. And I guarantee you, you're going to feel better for it. Um, has anybody else out there tried steaming? Um, you know, that's definitely something I'd like to do more of. Um, I, I must admit, I probably don't do as much of it as I should. Um, but I'm probably going to start now. Now that I've given this advice, I've got to follow my own advice. But yeah, steaming's really, really good for you as well. All right. Now, the fourth thing that I want to recommend for dry throat remedy is manuka honey. Now, manuka honey is a spe it's a medicinal honey. Honey, you know, it's not just any sort of honey. Um, honey itself is also good, by the way. Like if you can't get your hands on a manuka honey, you know, I guess any sort of good quality honey will be fine. Um, but manuka honey, I, I think has it, it's it's just got the medicinal qualities that will not only help you with your dry throat, but will actually just help you feel better overall, just well-being, uh, well-being wise, right? So, um, yeah, what I recommend in terms of buying Manuka honey though, because there is so many different types, um, don't get the ones that are in the supermarket, um, get the ones that are in the actual health food shops. Um, the ones in the health food shops are actually the real deal. Um, they tend to have a lot more um, actual active um, uh, ingredients in it that that are actually medicinal, um, whereas the ones that you can find in the supermarket, they're usually a lot cheaper, um, but don't have the, the same medicinal qualities, okay? Um, so at any point that you can, try and get your hands on a jar of Manuka honey. It is liquid gold for your dry throat. Um, the fifth um, remedy that I'd like to share is throat coat tea. Has anybody ever tried throat coat tea. I'm so glad, Vaughn, that you love Manuka honey. It is literally the best. Um, oh, hey, Debbie, so good to see you. Yay. Um, now, Kent is sharing that 15 plus is awesome. So you're talking about the honey, right? Yeah. So um, 
What was I? No, we're onto throat coat tea now. Sorry. Anyway, so I'm also going to put a little website down the bottom so you can actually go and, and find it here. So this particular website, traditionalmedicinals.com, they sell three different types of manu- um, manuka honey, throat coat tea. There's like echinacea flavor and lemon and something and uh, something I can't remember now. Eucalyptus, I think it is. Um, but anyway, throat coat tea is amazing. This is my favorite tea for soothing the throat. Um, I think it's it's there's there's a lot of beautiful natural herbs in it that that just when you drink it seriously no exaggeration it's like taking your voice to the spa <laughs> it's like you drink it you're like ah, oh, you know it's amazing um it's got licorice in it it's got all these other amazing herbal remedy in it and it's just amazing for your throat um has anybody else tried throat coat tea because it's yeah Karen likes throat coat tea woo, woo. okay fantastic I hope other the others if you haven't tried it before you need to get onto it okay all right so go and go and get it at that website there and then the last remedy that I want to um, share and remember after this one we will be going into a live Q&A so don't go away um is basically all natural throat sprays so the one that I use is this it's called entertainer's secret now it says for dry throat and hoarse voice Um, And I honestly have found this very, very helpful. I actually get a dry throat when I'm nervous, so before a performance. So I actually find this amazing. I take this with me before every gig and before I get on stage, I just go, you know, all you do is you go and you just spray a couple of sprays. Immediately you feel this relief um, and then, you know, get on stage and do your thing, (laughs) right? Now, very important thing about throat sprays is that it's has to be all natural please don't get the ones that are filled with crazy substances that you cannot pronounce the names of okay so you've got to look at um the ingredients and just make sure that it's it's basically things that you know and uh, can and can pronounce usually you what you want to find is something that is mostly aloe vera and water which is exactly what this is this is mostly aloe vera and water okay so all natural sprays are quite good um especially for pre for pre-performance you know I probably wouldn't use this necessarily each day on a daily basis I think on a daily basis it's better to do the other things that I mentioned steaming and getting a humidifier taking manuka honey and lemon you know drinking heaps of water eating lots of water rich foods um uh but this is actually really good for something to just take along with you before a performance and it just kind of makes you feel better you know you're like oh cool um I'm gonna be okay you know because you, you spray it and you and you actually feel great straight away so that's really awesome um abdul asked i eat aloe vera so does that count yeah i'm sure absolutely i mean if you're eating it it's actually getting into your system cellular on a cellular level so that's very cool um uh great virginia hello all right cool so they are basically my top six dry throat remedies guys um if you have any more remedies to share please do feel free to share them right now in the chat or in the comments if you're watching later would love to know all right it is live q a time so guys get your questions ready you can type them in the chat box and i will be happy to answer them i'll probably have time for about two or three questions to answer so go ahead guys and type in your questions right now now while you're doing that i'll just remind you again that I have a free gift, the Ultimate Vocal Warm-Up Guide ebook with 16 of my best vocal warm-ups to help you to warm up your voice and sound amazing, but also to build your voice. So if you haven't already, go and get it. It's at the website below. Did I mention it's free? Okay. All right, here we go. Let's see what questions are coming up right now. Um, okay, this is a very good question. Oh, where is it? Oops, I lost it. Um, yep. Okay, so Min Law has asked, hey, how can we tell the difference between, sorry, I'm just going to get rid of this website first. Okay, how can we tell the difference between strain and fatigue? That is such a good question. Now, it's going to feel a bit different in everyone, but basically, if you feel strain, it's going to, in some ways, feel quite uncomfortable and hurt. Um, And also, you, you, you know, you will actually feel a sense of either a little bit of pain, you know, huge discomfort, um, whereas fatigue feels more like you've worked your muscles. 
So it means it feels like you've you've worked them and you um you know like you've you've worked them they've had a good workout and but but they don't hurt you know they don't hurt you know um there's no pain involved um so hopefully that answers your question I'm trying to think of how else I can explain it if I think of anything else along the way I shall come back to that question um Cheryl asks is there a difference between vocal warm ups and vocal exercises uh, good question. Okay, so um, the way I personally approach vocal warm-ups and exercises is that they're pretty much the same thing. So I always use vocal exercises as warm-ups and I use warm up as vocal exercises. What do I mean by that? So every single vocal exercise that we do, it shouldn't just, um, you know, what they should do, a good vocal exercise, no matter whether you want to label it as a warm-up or, or an exercise, is that it will prepare you for singing. So it actually does something good for your vocal folds um, and for your vocal instrument, for your vocal tract, for your, um, you know, laryngeal structure that will actually get you prepared for good singing. So I guess that's the warm-up side of things. But a good vocal warm-up or exercise will also do something to build your voice. It will also do something to build your voice. Um, I guess if you really wanted to distinguish the difference, maybe vocal warm-ups are a bit more gentler in the sense that you're just really stretching your vocal folds and, and getting them ready. Um, and then vocal exercises can be the ones that really build your voice and build your vocal technique. Um, but I have found in my 15, over 15 years of vocal coaching that, that, that they're interchangeable. They're interchangeable and they should be. They should be, you know. Um, I guess I'd, I like to get the most bang for my buck. So um, I'll do things that will basically achieve two or three things at the same time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, when you do come and do live warm-ups with me, you are not only warming up your voice, but you are building vocal technique as well. Good question. Okay. Um, what physical exercises? So Lee Life is asking, what physical exercises can I do while I do warm-up vocals? Um, so do you mean like physical exercises for your body? If, if, that's, what you're, what, if that's what you mean, um, basically anything that's going to loosen up your muscles, okay? Um, so, for example, um, I find that 10 out of 10 singers, including myself, we get really tight in the neck, in the shoulders, um, in the jaw area. And also, and in, oh, I said neck already, okay? And also in the back. So it's really good to do some, you know, exercises that will just really help to get rid of some of that tension. So whether it's just some shoulder rolls forward and back, um, whether it's just some, you know, neck stretches, um, you know, whether it's some lower back, you know, just twisting like that to, to do um, uh, for the back and everything, that is fantastic, you know, because you, you bring up a really good point, Lee, because the thing is, in order for us to sing well, we actually need to be tension-free in our bodies. Um, so warming up and doing physical sort of, you know, warm-ups at the same time and getting rid of tension and stretching is fantastic. And I must I, and may I say also say yoga is fantastic. Yoga is just amazing. And I'm not saying you should do that at the same time whilst <laughs> doing your vocal exercises. What I mean is incorporating, um, incorporating, yoga into your just sort of weekly or whatever exercise routine is going to really help you with your singing all right i think i have one i have time for one more question before we wrap up okay so kina asks how do you know if your voice is tired i think i pretty much um answered that question before in the first one about um what do you call it? Um, you know, the difference between vocal fatigue and strain. So when when you you should feel it. You you when you're singing, it's harder. You know, it, it feels a little bit less comfortable. That's when you know your voice is tired and you probably need to stop. Um, okay, so that was actually not the question I was I, I had a, I saw another question that I thought was really good. Here we go, Matthew Jordan. Um, breathing techniques. I'm going to just really quickly say, guys, when it comes to breathing, remember these um, few things. Number one, don't make it noisy. So when you inhale, don't do a, <gasps> okay? I know we hear that all the time in pop music. Just don't do it, <laughs> okay? So when you go <gasps> like that, you are literally um, causing a, a whole heap of air to rush through your vocal folds, drying them out. And also you, you make yourself tight. You make your, your, your throat tight, okay? So really important not to do that. Second, so, so you, what you want to do is do a silent in-breath. So you go, you just open your mouth a little bit. You're using your nose as well. You're letting the air come through. So how do you do that? You actually expand your rib cage. It's all about a teeny tiny expansion in the rib cage. You don't need to be like, ah, 
oh, you know, and that's another thing. Don't do this, <gasps> you know, yeah. So don't, don't, don't recruit your shoulders and your chest, but instead learn to breathe from your rib cage. So as in activate the muscles in the rib cage, um, go and watch a video that I've done on that, which if you just, if you just went to my channel and looked up, um, you know, correct breathing for singing or something like that, you're going to definitely find a few videos that I've done on that. Okay. Um, and I think that's all I have time for guys. So thank you so very much for joining today's, um, live stream, how to, uh, vocal warm-ups with Kerry, how to warm up for dry throat. I really hope that, um, the, the things that I shared, um, you know, were, were helpful and I cannot wait to see you again for the next live stream. Make, make sure, um, that you do, when you do get the link to, you know, set yourself a reminder, share it, share the link with a friend, you know, someone that you know will actually, um, you know, uh, benefit from this. Okay. It's been amazing spending time with you today and, as always, songbirds know that I am always believing in you. So why don't you get out there, get grounded, take flight and sing. Thank you, everybody. It was so good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.